all is not well in the land of the leaf. The maple syrup king is having a rough week. And by maple syrup king, I mean Ezra, the co-founder and owner of The Rebel Media, an alternative news website located in Canada. Ezra's difficulties began back on the 17th when a former employee by the name of Kalen tweeted this out. Rebel tried to pay me $20,000 to make sure this video never got made. Well, goddamn, $20,000 to keep information a secret. I, I wonder what it's about. Well, the video is a good 10 minutes in length, and I'm going to try to bullet point it as best I can for you, because contained within are a litany of allegations and charges both against Ezra and against the Rebel Media. But I will include in the description a link to the video, so if you are inclined to watch it in its entirety, which I would highly suggest, it's down there for you to do so. So what exactly did Kalen have to say? $20,000 is a hefty sum to be offered to keep silent about something. But what exactly is that something? Well, to start with, that $20,000 was hush money. That's right, hush money, as Ezra puts it himself. And then there's the hush money shot side, which we'll talk about in a second. Ezra has a temper. The rebel commander has a habit of flying off the handle. After speaking to employees at the rebel live event in Canada I went to, it actually became pretty clear that these attacks were nothing compared to what actually goes on at the Rebel office. Questioning the Rebel's ethical decisions run you the risk of being on the receiving end of his legendary temper. And apparently it's also not uncommon for Rebel staffers to be brought to tears. He is litigious. He likes to use the law to inflict suffering on his critics. He's not interested in receiving money for damages. He wants to use the courts to silence people. I've even heard that while launching a lawsuit against one journalist who dared to question what happens to the Rebels' donation money, Ezra literally said that he wasn't suing for money, but to ruin his life. That the reason he was suing him was so he actually committed suicide. There was a guy in, in Ottawa who, who talked about our crowdfunding, and so I sued him for $95,000. It's just not a lot of money. But it, it's just, I wanted to send a signal. And fucking this guy here uh, is in a five year trap. He's in a five year fucking trap. But things really begin to heat up when they get into the topic of donation money as well as email petitions. Because it would seem, as Kalen alleges, the rebel is misusing or misappropriating the funds that it receives through donations from the viewers. When the rebel asked for money that it already had for the Israel trip, what exactly was that money for? When Laura Loomer was arrested in New York, Ezra had already set up a donation page for legal fees. And that was before she even stormed the stage. When Rebel said it needed $25,000 to make a documentary about Iraqi Christians, the documentary never happened. And to turn stories into campaigns. Over and over, Ezra would drill into us the importance of collecting email addresses. To sign our petition. And chip in 10, 20, 50 bucks to sign our petition. I've set up a petition. Sign our petition. You go to firebob.ca. Sign our petition. Sign our petition. They can't stop us. Even once boasting over dinner how easy it was to use a website called Nation Builder to send 100,000 people an email asking for money without the media or the public knowing anything about it. And those donations, well, they actually play a part in some previous history with the website. In regards to a former contributor, for those of you unfamiliar with Lauren Southern, she was most well known for hunting down illegal immigrants through the forests of Europe. It was quite a, quite a popular show. She would go out there and round them up and then execute them after making them get on their knees. At least, this is what Jack Conte told me. I can't, I can't vouch for the accuracy of it. But you know, it is manifest observable behavior or some shit like that. Lauren was a popular contributor. She gained quite a following and she brought in a lot of views for the Rebel Media. And so when she published this video... But it's time for me to go independent. I've been meaning to for a while and, um, you know, I can't get into too much detail about what went down at Rebel. It came as a shock to people. Why would she be leaving the website? Why would she be going independent? Well, according to Kalen, there's a backstory to that that has to do with how the Rebel raised money and what Ezra asked of Lauren in relation to it. Now, do you remember that Israel trip that Rebel crowdfunded for? The one that took place at the same time that Lauren Southern went independent? It's not a coincidence. It actually turns out that Rebel crowdfunded more than enough money to cover the costs of that trip. And yet, they still demanded she make a video asking for more. 
Of course, Lauren refused, and after raising concerns about the ethics of lying for the money that they didn't need, she was unceremoniously fired and threatened with legal action if she ever spoke out about it. That's right, she didn't leave, she was fired. Lauren Southern Jack was so that we had our differences, but you'll notice that they've been positive since they left it. Why would Lauren fight with them? You see how smart they are? They may have agreed and said, you know, I, I feel like I had a real hand in getting Lauren going, and probably Jack a bit, but he was pretty good. And, but you notice how smart they are? They're not actually saying, if they're grumbling, they're not grumbling that is quite a lot of bombshells for a 10 minute video about an individual and the company he runs. As you might imagine, Ezra didn't take this too well. Once that video came out and it started to get some traction, once it started to get some viewership to it, the rebel media responded. Ezra put up his side of the story. Now, during the course of his video, which, again, will be linked in the description, Ezra brings up a few points. He says that Kalen and another associate related to Kalen, who was involved in this deal, weren't actually being paid money to keep secrets. They were blackmailing him. He goes over an alleged history of their employment at his company, stating how they originally came on to work with Tommy Robinson. They were providing visual effects and editing and performing those kinds of services for him. Because Ezra was so impressed with their work, he began to pay them more and more money. But being young guys, they were irresponsible with it, constantly asking for more and more cash from him. This all culminates with Ezra finally saying, no more. You're asking for too much money. You're moonlighting and doing other work for other companies. You're not delivering on the content you promised you would. I'm going to let you go. At which time, these two individuals, Kalen and his associate, said they were going to blackmail Ezra if he did not pay them a certain amount of money. And what blackmail did they have exactly? Well, it relates back to Tommy Robinson. They had footage of Tommy talking about an assault he was involved with that would end up making him look bad and potentially getting him into legal trouble. And Ezra was concerned about Tommy so much that he was going to pay them to stop. And so what ends up transpiring on Twitter, once both of them have released their videos, once Kalen has put forth his side of the story and then Ezra responded with his side, is a back and forth between the two. A internet game of chicken to find out who has the biggest set of balls between them. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to release internal documents. I dare you to do it. I'm going to put up more videotape. Bullshit you are. I'm going to get my lawyers. Now, this event by itself would not be the end of the world for the rebel media or that damning for Ezra. He could tell his side, Kalen could tell his, and both could go their separate ways letting lawyers work it out in the end. But what you need to know are the events surrounding this videotape being released. Because it's not just the 17th that's a rough spot for Ezra. It's a shit week altogether. Back on Monday, on the 14th, the co-founder of the website, Brian Lilly, left, citing a multitude of reasons, stating that he was uh, dissatisfied with the direction that Rebel Media was going, that he saw them developing a slant, he didn't like the coverage, he thought they were becoming too cozy with the alt-right. Following that, on the 15th, another contributor to the website, Barbara Kay, releases a statement saying she's leaving as well. But it gets crazier as it continues, because even more people start to come forward. Caitlin tweets this out, Holly Henderson was hired as a contributor, and they did this to her. Yeah, I've never seen a penny in wages off Rebel for two months of working for them. After giving up my other work that paid me a lot of money, I wrote all my own scripts, unlike a lot of the reporters. They proper screwed me over. So now we have two contributors that left earlier in the week and three former contributors that are alleging all sorts of things from not being paid money to being offered money to not tell secrets. But it continues to get worse because later on that day, this comes out, Gavin McGinnis is leaving Rebel Media as well. How much worse could this get for Ezra? So that's Gavin gone. That's Brian gone. That's Barbara gone. That's Kaylin gone. That's Kaylin's associate gone. And that's a former employee alleging that they weren't paid the wages they were promised. Well, at least Goldie stands by Ezra. She's got some faith. Goldie will stand with him forever. And by forever, I mean a whopping six hours until Ezra fires her. Fires her that evening after she stood up for him. Kicks her out the fucking door. And how did he address the reasoning behind letting her go? I like Faith Goldie. How can you not? Brilliant, beautiful, tough, hardworking, great journalist. She's done amazing work from her investigation into illegal immigrants at the U.S. border to bringing humanitarian aid to Iraq for Christian refugees to being the most pro-Israel star in our company. 
I was upset that she went to the Charlottesville protest despite my direction to her not to go in any capacity, but we all screw up. You don't throw someone overboard for making a mistake. Each of us are second chancers here. Our whole company is a second chance. But then I saw the news that she had gone on a podcast from the Daily Stormer, and it was just too far. So we said goodbye. Tough week. So because she had gone onto a podcast that he didn't like, it was time to let her go. The reaction to that immediately was not a very positive one. It maybe was not something that Ezra truly thought through. In fact, whether or not Lauren Southern left or was fired, again, was not a really brilliant decision on the part of Ezra. When you look at the metrics between the two, you can really see that crystal clear. Here's a sampling of the most recent videos that Lauren has put up. As you can see, her view count ranges from 100,000 to 400,000 views per video. Now here are the Rebel Media's videos. The lowest is 7,000. The variance between these two accounts and their high ends and low ends is obvious. It becomes even more ridiculous when you realize that Lauren Southern and her YouTube channel has less than half of the subscribers that the Rebel Media does. So perhaps Ezra is not the best person to be making decisions related to who he lets go and who he keeps on. Just how much worse could this get? I mean, at least they still have the crews. At least all those Rebel Media fans that have been looking forward to getting on a boat with Rebel Media personalities and, and sailing the seas of uh, the Norwegian paradise or wherever the fuck this was scheduled to go. At least they still have that to look. Oh, no, wait, they don't. The cruise has been canceled. The cruise has been canceled because there's nobody fucking left at the Rebel Media. Everybody's been fired. Ezra went nuts and fired fucking everyone. Now, in Ezra's response to Kaylin, something really caught my attention. I personally took to the UK to pay them off. I put in some money and Tommy put in some money and we got them to sign the contract. The way he phrases it makes it seem like Tommy Robinson was directly involved in all these events. But when you look at Kalen's Twitter account, he keeps talking about leaving Tommy out of it. He doesn't want to get him involved. He's not looking to throw him under the bus. He even accuses Ezra of doing that. Well, fast forward a day, and Kalen releases this videotape to address the allegations that Ezra brought up in his response. We had that agreement. There was, there was names, but there was the two months pay offered. And the difference, um, in fact, on the house, and the difference was taken. Uh, so that's that, that's what that money that's what that figure um that the severance agreement um and actually that's what that was about yeah. well, one one thing to clarify is there was never any threat when it comes to that is i i honestly been completely up front with you now I do well, not. I, think one second, I do not care. Know, okay, good. I do not care at this point. Good. So then maybe I don't even need to. Maybe I don't even need to pay any money then, um, because if there was no shakedown, then there's nothing to pay. If there was no extortion attempt, and no need to pay extortion. And you're saying there's no shakedown and no extortion. Good. And I, I don't think you're saying about the shakedown. What it, the point is, is it's the ten months of the contract. Tommy Robinson was there, yet Ezra was dissatisfied with this. He actually responded by saying that it was doctored, it was edited, and he dared Kaylin to release the unedited footage. Now, as we stand right now, that hasn't happened, but I want you to just take a look at the big fucking picture here. Just pull up a calendar and just look at the justing that's been going on since the... Four that's what it looks like. I don't know if Ezra is a fan, but he has been justed as hard as you can get justed. And so we're left with a lot of questions and speculation as to what's going on here. And we're, we're left with them because a lot of the details don't really add up. At the beginning of the week, both Brian and Barbara left the website stating they didn't like the alt-right slant that it was taking. Yet, what is the content we see Rebel Media putting on their YouTube page or up on their website? Videos like this. There are many out there, mostly on the left, who would label me as an alt-right ally or some Hotep member simply because I support the alt-right's freedom of speech and assembly. Allow me to erode those misconceptions right away. But before I begin, feel free to explore the comment section below and look at all the alt-right internet intellectuals blaming the Jews for calling me a nigger because I disagree with them. On top of that, Ezra fires Goldie for going on to a racist podcast. 
So if that's the content they're putting up, and if they're letting go of talent because they're associating with something deemed to be too racist, it would seem odd that these two people would list that as the reason for leaving. Next, you have the seemingly random occurrence of Gavin McGinnis just up and leaving. But what about those cruise goers, Gavin? They want to see you in your leather assless chaps, you motorcycle riding madman. You're disappointing your fans, Gavin. How could you do it? Then you have former employees start to come out and bring all these allegations about what was going on behind the scenes, about people being basically bullied out for not begging for money, for not grafting for extra cash, which would be the case with Lauren. Now, whether or not that's true, we'll probably never really know. If she was forced to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, she can't really come out and say what's going on. And all of these events are transpiring during the same week that this video comes out. It almost seems as if the rebel media is a sinking ship with an insane captain, and everybody is fleeing from it so they don't get dragged down under when it goes. Now, is Kaylin telling the truth? Is Ezra telling the truth? Is the truth somewhere in the middle? I have no idea, but it is a fun shit show to watch. What does Ezra have left at the rebel media? He's got Laura Loomer. Laura Loomer and her godforsaken tires. Ah yes, the tires. What better thing do you want associated with your brand than an absurd story relating to tires? But that is now what the rebel media will be known for. It will be known for having talent that got shit-talked by the Michelin Man on Twitter, which is an accomplishment not many people can boast about, but Laura Loomer can. It is exceedingly rare. For you to be able to watch the implosion of a media entity take place in real time before your eyes. But that is exactly what is happening with the rebel media. I think the simplest way to really sum it up and to put a nice bow on it is to say this. If you are a media website, if you create visual content that people consume, and you are more known for the people that have left your website than for the people that are still on your website, you are in deep, deep shit.